Folks, we recently wrapped up our latest round of notebook conferences, and I want to take a few moments to talk about um, some of the really great work that that many of you are doing. And that way it can be um, kind of a, a good way for us to think about how is it that all of us can try and continue to take that next step with our notebooks. We started over the summer just simply trying to be better consumers to build that contextual pool. And since then, we've taken steps to continue to use this as a place um, where it's safe to take some chances with our writing, um, but where we're also going to push ourselves. And so that's kind of the goal and that's some of the things that I wanna show you really quickly here today, um, as far as the way that some of your classmates are doing that. Now in truth, I had all sorts of examples to choose from. Um, and so there are some that uh, I didn't include that now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I didn't include that entry. But really I wanna show you kind of some big picture type of things rather than the nitty gritty within uh, each writing. And so uh, if yours doesn't appear uh, in this collection, please don't read into that, um, especially if yours matches up with a lot of what you're seeing here. Let's take a look here at uh, some of the different uh, kind of cool things that came out of your notebooks. So I want to start kind of here really quickly, just with like the, the big five things that made the notebook conferences uh, run smoothly. Okay. One was just the preparation. Um, for the most part, people came in very much ready to go with those. Not just that they were done, but people knew exactly which entries they were gonna talk about, and here's the key. They knew how they were going to talk about them. They knew what they were going to highlight. They knew that they were going to say, here's what I read, here's how I'm thinking about this piece, here's how I would extend it, um, here's some cool writing things that I did within those. So the preparation uh, was, was really a key. Um, and for people who struggled a little bit, uh, they opened up their notebooks and flipped around and went, weren't quite sure where they wanted to start. I think that preparation was, was huge. Um, the second one, I think there was a big strength this time around of writing based off the question. When we first did our notebooks over the summer, and even kind of in that first round once we returned, many of us were reading something or watching something or listening to something. And most of our notebook was dedicated to summarizing what it was that we consumed. I loved the shift that we saw this time, where instead of having the text be the guiding force, it was like, I read a text or watched a text or listened to it. I crafted a question. Then I brought that question up to the top and I wrote off that question. I think that's a big difference because instead of summarizing, we're actually making an argument. If we're just writing about what it is that we read or watched or listened to, you're writing a summary. We want to be writing an argument, inspired certainly by what we read and watched and listened to, but really it's about what we were left thinking about and we're left wondering that we want to explore. So I loved the entries that instead of summarizing what the text was, said, I read this piece, it made me think about this question, and so here's the writing I created based off of it. Number three, um, no deep dive here, but I just loved the variety of texts that so many of you came up with, uh, both in terms of the type of text that you looked at. Um, a lot of podcasts this time around, which was cool. A lot of TED Talks. Um, some people have been using the Time 100 Talks. And of course, plenty of articles from a variety of really good resources. Keep up the great work there. Um, and also just good breadth and depth, both. Breadth meaning a wide variety of topics and then depth, those things we're passionate about continuing to drill down and, and really get to some good stuff. Four, I loved this shift that so many of us made. Um, with those structures being considered, many of you wrote at the very, very top, like if I were to do an extension on this, it would be a CFC, or it would be a problem solution, or it would be a diamond. Um, some of you even used those structures, and we'll look at some examples. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do that every entry, because I also loved some of the entries that people brought and said, listen, like, I loved this. I'm interested. Help me think through this, though. That's awesome. That's what I'm here for. But the thinking had clearly already happened, and they then made their case for problem solution versus CFC, and then we could talk about that. So that preparation about structure was another great thing. Last but not least, and this is one of the big ones, is just the evidence um, prepared for what writerly moves were being attempted. People already knew where they were going to show me where they were using new vocabulary, where they were trying um, parallel structure, where they were trying the CFC. 
And I think that was a, a huge strength and I'll show you some examples of that. So some of these are handwritten, they'll be a little harder to see, some of which are typed out. I'll try and zoom in a little bit, but really it's kind of the big picture stuff that I wanna focus on. I wanna show you really quickly one entry, not necessarily for um, every little detail in it. I even kind of cut it off a little bit short, but because take a quick look. Look at how many great things are, are already in here. One, we know up at the top what the text was that they read. You notice over here, CFC, they've already thought about which structure they're going to go with. We start with a question, to what extent is libertarianism positive for the United States? And then if you zoom in a little bit, we won't read through the whole thing. Notice, this isn't summarizing an article. This writer is truly exploring the question that they generated. You'll also notice that the writer underlined some words that they were working on using, that they intentionally tried to use to work through those kinks. We see innately, we see inherently, great, great words. So what I love is, even without reading this entire entry, what a great example of saying, here's the text, here's the structure I'd use, here's my question, boom, I'm off, I'm running, and I'm not summarizing. Plus, we get a chance to go ahead and take a look at some words that this writer tried to implement. Really cool. All right, uh, here's another one. I didn't highlight this one, I'll zoom in really quickly. Let me throw myself out of the way. Here we go. Similarly here, this one, problem solution, different article, different source than last time. What's the importance of remaining united in politics? And once again, polarizing is used, inability, Crucial. Now, these are not million dollar words, but they're the right words. And they're words that this writer doesn't necessarily naturally think to use and wanted to really put attention on. Great, great examples here once again. All right, let's keep cruising. Speaking of those words, I really liked how some people showed me their word nerd sections. Now, everyone's looked a little bit different, but I really liked this one that I grabbed just because um, I thought it was a great example of having a word, facet, one-sided, something many, uh, one side of something many-sided, excuse me, an aspect. And then of course, as we talked about, um, including actual context, that way we can see how it's used. But this year I've been reminded of another facet, another aspect of grief. We see that in some of these other ones as well that we have here. Um, adversity, uh, supplicate. We've got a wide variety here um, of, of words that we can pull in. But it, again, it wasn't just that this person left them on the page. As we come down and we look at an entry from this writer, what do we have? Multifaceted. We see that word actually get used. So it's not just sitting there in our word nerd section for just the sake of collecting words. We're using them. We saw it here. And we saw it in these other entries as well with this other writer uh, who was underlining uh, the words that they came up with. So the word nerd actually being used. All right, I wanna show you a couple other quick things here. Um, another great example. I don't expect you to be able to, to read this necessarily, but I love that this writer start up at the top. Hey, I did a bunch of entries, but like this is one I really wanna talk about. Um, this writer up at the top, once again, we've got the text which is really cool. We've got the date, which is nice, and the question. What's the relationship between vulnerability and growth? I think that's a great one. And now all of a sudden, she can talk a little bit about the TED Talk, but really she's talking more about this idea of vulnerability and growth and that relationship. But I also wanted to zoom in here on what got underlined. A little hard to see. Let me get this out of the way here. Great writing moments. That's exactly what this writer underlined. Check out this first bit. Um, I knocked myself down a couple pegs. There's no, sh uh, no showers, no bathrooms, no mirrors, no Wi-Fi. Why is it underlined? It was an attempt to use parallel structure. And this writer can now say, look, here's exactly where I did it. Not just for me, but also for herself. That way she can look back and say, Cool, like these are moments where I was able to make these things work. That's what we want. Here's another example down here, not of parallel structure, but of another writing move. 
using an M dash and then including a little bit of a, a phrase after it. I wish to gain a portion of their experience, a glimpse into their knowledge. Perfect use of a little M dash to tack something on there, underlined as a reminder to me and to herself where she's using these particular writing, uh, writing moves. Final example that I wanted to show you this. Actually, I might have a final two. I lied. Okay, final one of this and then one more thing. Um, I liked this. This was really cool. This up here, I'll make a, a quick little note. To the left here, to the left, we have an excerpt. from Mary Fisher, from Mary Fisher's speech that we studied. Now that wasn't in the notebook, but you'll notice that this pattern that we saw of all of the stats, the reality, 200,000 are dead and dying, a million more infected, worldwide 40 million, 60 million, 100 million infections will be counted in the coming years. But despite it all, it's the epidemic that's winning. Here's an entry from a notebook in which they took this concept and said, I want to try this. I want to try this move in my own writing. Took it down here. Instead of the reality of AIDS, we have the truth about animals in need is that around 6.6 .6 million animals are surrendered to shelters per year, not including uh, the hundred thousands of strays. We've got more data here. And then notice what we have here. Despite our inherent love of animals, and despite the money so many donate, more help is simply needed. It's not taken word for word, but we have all of these despites used again with then kind of this final idea. Taken, used. Remember, good writers are good thieves. I loved that this was in the notebook and I loved that this writer was prepared to highlight it. Okay, last but not least, um, a few people, and I grabbed this one just because it was typed out. Uh, I figured it'd be a little bit easier to see. Um, a few people, actually tried to use their structures. Not only did they say, hey, if I were to write on this, I would do a CFC or a problem solution or a diamond. Some people tried it just in a mini form. Check this out. I do want to read this one together. So this person read 16 candles, but few blazing a trail to the ballot box. Uh, it was about the idea of whether or not we should be changing the voting age. Check out how the person wrote about it. This is a CFC. We have C, common assumption. F for first glance, and then the final C, the closer look, or the complex understanding. I got this entry. We've got the AP style question and then the text. As a society, we've established that the age of 18 is the earliest a person can vote. And at first glance, it certainly seems to be an act to protect democracy. With teens' brains still developing and without a high school diploma, why would we want anyone younger than 18 to cast a vote? A closer look, however, reveals that this age limit is short-sighted and maybe even an act of suppression. Throughout history, restricted voting has been a way for the government to stifle the voices of those they do not want to hear. African Americans, women, etc. In truth, the arguments about teens not being able to handle the burden of adult responsibility is really about something more. Those in power do not want to have to address the valid concerns of our well-educated, innovative, and inspired generation. And then the writer continues. They're off and running. Consider this. At 16 years old, and then we've got examples, right? Right? Of Jack and Draca. We have examples of Louis Braille. We have Malala Yousafzai. We've got all of these great ones. But what I want to highlight is common assumption right in there. They're practicing it. First glance. They even used the phrase. 
And I love the question too of like, why would we even rethink this? And then last but not least, but if we take a closer look, if we take on a more complex understanding, this person used those phrases. And then from here on out, boom, we're into the closer look. Now, if you look at that and you say, you know what, like, cool, but like, I don't know if I want to actually use those phrases. I don't know if you have to, like, you could, you could get rid of, of something like that. Oh, excuse me. You could cut that and just say, boom, kind of change this around instead of a closer look, however reveals. We could change that. You don't have to use those terms. But I love that this person actually used a mini CFC, practiced it. And what an awesome introduction paragraph this would be, even on a timed writing. What a great intro paragraph this person had if they were to do a timed writing. Okay. So as you think about improving your next notebook conference, and you think about improving your notebooks in preparation for those, just come back to the big five. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're writing based off the question, not the text. Make sure a variety of texts are utilized. For the most part, we were in good shape there. Um, four, make sure you've considered the structures and maybe even tried it a couple times. I don't know if you need to do that for every entry, but if you see a clear one, why not? Why not practice the CFC? Why not do a mini problem solution? Why not do a mini triangle? And last but not least, be ready to show your evidence. Where were you including, incorporating your um, your new vocabulary, your strong verbs. Where were you trying parallel structure? Where did you try something that you saw um, or that we talked about in a writer's workshop? Where were those moments? That is how to go from good to great for your next notebook entry. Folks, thanks so much for watching. I'm already looking forward to our next conferences. Keep up the great work. We'll keep pushing these notebooks. And uh, by the end of the year, you're going to be amazed at where it is with your writing compared to those first entries over the summer. Keep up the great work and thank you as always.